Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me this fine morning. I hope you all have time to wake up a little bit, maybe get a cup of coffee, uh, pour that bowl of cereal, and sit back and relax. Um, reason why I brought you guys here today because I wanted to show you what GoTo is all about. It's something that is available to you especially when um, I'm not on campus. This is something that you could uh, email me or message me on the board if you wanted to chat, if you wanted to um, have me look at something, especially when we get into the plans and the rough drafts for the final presentation. We're gonna, um, I'm gonna go over that a little bit today. However, you know, uh, the way the class is set up is it's a progression. That's what's cool about creative presentation is that each week built off of each other. So what the, whole, the way that is designed is to build you up week by week. So when it comes to the final presentation, you are more than prepared to to give a stellar presentation. Um, you know, starting starting with getting to know the audience and then going through the planning process, then building your presentation and receiving feedback, making those tweets, tweaks and um, just putting together something that I'm hoping you will use in the future. The way that um, the classes are structured at, at this point, uh, many, many changes occurred over the last few months, and it's an ecosystem where at several points in your program, you are gonna go through uh, career development and portfolio classes. So it's my hope that I get you excited enough to put together a piece that you're proud of and something that you'll take with you throughout your entire program. And as you start learning new skills and developing relationships and having creating new pieces that you build on the foundation that you lay in this month. So, Without further ado, what I usually do is I'll go ahead and unmute all the mics. I'll count down from three. And just to get a feel, there's a lot of us in the room currently, so it can get a little chaotic and sound like a train wreck. Um, but we'll, we'll test it out. So if you would say good morning to each other in three, two, one. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay, uh, before we get started, and uh, I, I want to give you some suggestions when it comes to the control panel that's in front of you. Do you all see that you have a control panel in front of you? It shows you. Uh, who is attending the class? It gives you an option to use the chat box, which I see many of you have found the chat box already. Cool. Um, know that the chat box goes very, very quickly. So I will do my best if you ask a question to glance over and, and pay attention as much as I can. Please don't get frustrated if you have to ask, ask a question again, if you have to type it again. Um, it's very, very small, unfortunately. They haven't improved that yet, but the chat box is very, very small and it goes by very fast. So what you can do is there is an option underneath the names that are in the current session there's a place where you can mute your mic, 
And there's also a, a button that looks like a hand with an arrow going through it. If you see that button, could you please press it for me? Just so I know that you know. Okay, cool. Most of us know where that is. And to put your hand down, um, you simply press it again. Jeremiah, it's right underneath the names that are in the class. Uh, so if you look at the drop down box that says attendees, um, right below it is that button. Cool. Okay, so what that does, it will give me a visual. You know, it will give you something to look at and I'll understand that you have a question or you have a comment. And I'll go ahead and unmute your mic. So, awesome. I'm gonna um, unmute your hands. And I'm gonna go ahead and put everyone on mute for now. Um, and know that you can uh, use that raise the hand button if you have any questions or comments. Know that I'm big on discussion. I love it. It's, it I feed off it. It gives me energy. It makes, um, it makes these sessions more enjoyable with interaction. Um, you know, I can talk. Believe me, I can talk. I have a lot of information that I can give you. However, I don't need to hear my own voice the entire, the entire time, nor do you need to be subjected to my voice the entire time. So please, please be interactive. Please ask questions and um, just be proactive and communicate with each other. Uh, it just, it makes it go so much, so much smoother and fun. Okay. All right. First things first. Um, and this is not going to be a long one. It's just things that we could not get to in class yesterday. Um, and again, I love conversation. I love the fact that we got to know each other a little bit. Like I said in class, pretty much for the four weeks, we're a family. We are each other's support system. We're there to build each other up. We're there to share knowledge with each other um, and, and learn together. So... Um, what, one of the things that I love about my job is that I get to learn. I get to learn every single day. And, you know, if being a student was a profession, I, that's what I would do. Um, however, I, I feel like I could do that as an educator. So, yes, I have the degrees. I wear the different color lanyard. I have the certifications and the license, the state license, but that doesn't make me better than you. What that does is allow me to be in an environment full of creative people that open my mind every single day. And I hope that um, that's something that you're open to as well. We, like I said yesterday, we all have something to bring to the table, and that should excite you. Knowledge should excite you. Experience should excite you. And I'm hoping that in this month, we can build that together. So the first thing, order of business, that I want to go over is online orientation. Is there anyone in this room that cannot get into our class yet? Okay, I don't see any hands, so I'm um, assuming that everyone has done online orientation and we can now get into creative presentation. Awesome. 
For those of you that could not make it this morning and will be watching this recording back, um, please know that if you have not um, completed orientation to do that ASAP, uh, that is going to give you access into our class and you could begin working on assignments. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to introduce you to is lynda.com. I mentioned this in our class yesterday. However, this is such an amazing asset. And no, I don't get paid from lynda.com to give a commercial on it. But know that I'm I'm a twice graduate from Full Sail and Lynda.com is amazing. Um, especially if you are the type of person that likes to challenge yourself and you like to go above and beyond what is expected in any one class and you want to improve your skills even before you get to that part in your program. Linda has everything, um, anywhere from novice to intermediate to expert um, classes in any programs that you would encounter here at Full Sail and beyond. Um, the cool thing about Linda is it isn't your 12 year old that is giving a tutorial on YouTube. These are industry professionals. These are people that wrote the programs themselves and are educating you on, on the use of them um, in any part of the industry. It also certifies you in that skill. So what it does is after you complete um, a lynda.com tutorial, it issues you a certificate of completion. That certificate of completion is now an asset to you and you could put it in your portfolio, you can list it on your resume, you can um, bring that in an interview and now uh, pitch it as a skill that you now have. Um, Linda is coupled, coupled with LinkedIn and now um, as of I would say July of last year, but don't quote me on that. It's about, been about a year that they merged together and you can now upload or share, uh, I'm sorry, share your certificate of completion right to your LinkedIn page. So this is now something that you have to show for. You now have certification, you now have a new skill, you, wherever you're at in your program, you, are, you now have the opportunity to learn programs that you will um, be subjected to later on on this journey that you took in full sale. It gives you a leg up. It gives you the advantage of knowing your way around a program. Um, thank you, Connor, for that uh, link. Yes, that is the link. However, don't use that link um, on an outside browser. You must go through Connect. Um, to get to Linda, and I'm going to show you that right now. If you if you type in Linda.com, uh, whether it is Chrome or uh, Safari or Firefox, if you do that on a separate search engine, it's going to ask you to pay for it. And Linda.com is part of being a full sale student, you have the availability. Okay. Um, I thought that I had connect up, so forgive me. Um, let me get to connect for you. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm sure you guys are familiar with the screen and Connor is correct. You'll be asked your username and password that you get into Connect um, for Linda. And this is the home page. This is the home page of Connect. And um, this is where the hub for everything. It is going to give you updates of what's going on around campus, which is fabulous. There's always something going on around campus. And if you want to be relevant here and network and get the experience, the real campus experience that you have the advantage of having, use Connect to find out what's going on. There's always guest speakers. There's always seminars going on. Um, just so much is going on around campus. Now, there's several things that you could do here. Here's the home hub. You have organizations, then you have events. Um, events is, like I said, going to give you the upcoming events. Um, that's a really good question. Unfortunately, no, you have to move it around, unfortunately. Um, although you don't have to have it up the entire time, if you wanted to minimize the screen, um, the, the yellow button at the top of the control panel will minimize the screen and will, uh, could take it out of your way. Okay, so on the Connect page, this is where your courses are. So um, this is where you can get in to orientation and then uh, the classes that you are currently in. So you should see CRP and you should see PYP if you are taking both courses. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, you can get your student email um, my stuff is going to be like your your grades. Um, there's a student manual, tech support, library, which I'm going to go ahead and, and show you today as well. Uh, there's an easy way to get to all that. If you go to organizations, the way that um, the Connect page is set up is kind of cool because you have all these icons or, if you will, apps uh, right on the page. They're in alphabetical order. So you could find anything you need to find. It's all in alphabetical order. So the first thing that I want to show you is Linda. And if we go down to the L's, lynda.com is right here. You'll see this little icon. Um, incidentally, Linda is a real person. She's, she's really, she's extremely cool. And she founded this whole organization with her husband. Um, it's an amazing story. If you ever have the time, uh, how Linda gets started is, is actually one of the tutorials within the library. So if, if you have, if you ever have spare time, it's a very interesting story, how it came about, what their mission is with the education. Um, it's really fascinating. So through Connect, you would go to the Linda icon. It would bring you to this welcome page and you would access Linda.com. Of course, this thinking. I don't need to do this right now. Okay, and it's gonna bring you to this. Now it may or may not um, ask you for your credentials again. Uh, so it depends. You may have to put in your full sale um, username and password again, but it may not. It may bring you right to the hub. Uh, Dennis says, was Linda the lady in the picture? Um, it's, it's modeled after her, I would say. It's definitely modeled after her. 
Um, she does have, she is a brunette and wears glasses. Um, so the uh, iconic pic, uh, the icon of Linda.com is definitely modeled after her and it makes sense. Okay, so here is where you can get everything and the library is going to give you, um, it'll show you the programs and subjects in alphabetical order. You can do a search. So say you wanted to use PowerPoint and you just don't really understand the whole program, you could go right to PowerPoint. It's gonna give you a list of everything that's available. So you can, you can um, find out what version of PowerPoint that you have and go and watch that tutorial. Um, the other thing I want to point out is if you go to the people icon right next to your name, certificates is where your certificate of completion is going to be. Okay, it's going to give you a list of all the certificates um, that you completed and you could view them and print them to put them in a physical portfolio. Or like I said, you can share. And look at that, you could share on Facebook and show people how smart you are. Um, your Twitter account, if you have a Twitter and a LinkedIn profile. Uh, I got a private question, but I'm going to address that to the entire class. Um, I will make recommendations, absolutely. After we are out of the session today, I'm going to be sending, um, I'm gonna be sending an email with some supplementary videos that will help you um, this week. I, I start to share um, a Linda playlist in week two, once we start getting into um, our final presentations and doing work on our final presentations. So I absolutely um, give you recommendations. However, um, like I said yesterday in, in lecture, the delivery of any one assignment is completely up to you. Uh, you guys have creative freedom. It's understood that everybody has different levels of skill and different wants, different needs, different desires. So there really wouldn't be, there isn't any um, one program that I'm going to say that you have to use. I won't say, okay, for this project, you need to just use iMovie and that's it. You, you have creative freedom when it comes to that. But I will make recommendations. Okay, so that's Linda. Is there, is there any questions on uh, lynda.com? Or is that pretty clear on how to get there? Awesome. Okay, let's go back to connect. I don't know why it's not going to the home page. Okay. All right, the other thing that I want to introduce you to, and again, we'll, um, I'll probably go over this again in week two, but the library, the library is a really good resource. Uh, you guys have the advantage because if you walk right out of 3F where we currently are for our class, uh, the library is right in the corner where both sides of building three meet in the corner. It's a great place. They have everything. They have movies, they have games, they have computers in case something, you know, uh, goes wrong, God forbid, with your laptop. Uh, 
the library is equipped with everything. They have printers. They have everything that you need right on campus. The cool thing about the library on Connect is it gives you online resources. Online resources is going to give you help, especially when you are trying to establish credibility in your presentations. It's going to give you opportunities to go look in research databases. So um, there's two that I recommend when it comes to researching. Uh, whether it's researching a company that you desire or it, it's researching employment opportunities or it's researching um, icons or successful people that are in the industry already just to get a feel for what you're getting into and what you should look for. Um, so EBSCOhost is, is a great resource. To, for articles, for um, information on any particular subject. Uh, AP Images is another one. When I was talking yesterday briefly about copyright, um, AP Images is a forum that allows you to browse through royalty-free images. And it's a collection of images that you could use to enhance your presentations. Again, it's gonna ask you, or I'm gonna ask you, that as long as you let me know where you retrieved the image from, you're covered, okay? So, um, it has a search bar, and you could you could put in say Blizzard. Oops, I my fingers don't work. Okay, and it'll literally give you some pictures of Blizzard, but then there's you know there's like. Um, pictures of, of seminars that uh, Blizzard has been a guest star at. Um, so if you're looking for things that are going to be complementary to your presentation, and we'll go into more of this in week two when you start to read Synology, um, AP Images is a great place to get copyright free images. Uh, Patrick says, do you want us to just tell you before the presentation or we would list it somewhere with the rest of our sources? Great question, Patrick. Um, it depends on what program that you're using. If you are using, say, a PowerPoint or Keynote presentation, there are what is called presentation notes. And if you just put the link right in the presentation notes, that would suffice for me. Um, if you are using like an iMovie um, or any other kind of presentation software, you may wanna include it in like maybe a, a credit slide um, and just list like image one or Blizzard image one and the link where you got it from. Is that cool? Awesome. Uh, Jeremiah, I'm not incredibly sure what you need me to repeat. Okay, so, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's AP images. There's also, if you scroll down to L, there's LexisNexis. 
LexisNexis is a great opportunity. Say you you want to explore a certain company. Um, one of my favorites is Naughty Dog. So we'll put Naughty Dog Inc. Okay, um, so this is going to give you, this is going to give you the newest articles based on that, um, that company. It's the newest thing. And if you want to be involved in your industry and really understand what's going on and what's available to you as a full cell graduate, I recommend that you start researching the companies that you desire to work for. This is something that is going to give you incentive, motivation. It'll allow you to start preparing um, goal setting. Like, okay, this is where I, this is where I'm at, but this is where I want to be. And this is what they're looking for. So I need to do A, B, and C while I'm in school so I can reach that goal. Make sense? Awesome. Okay. And that's, I just wanted to introduce you to what's available. You have so many resources at your fingertips. And I'm going to guide you there and I'll, I'll give you what you need to succeed, but you have to take the initiative to take advantage of them. So it will be up to you. You can, you can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish while you're here. You can gain as much experience and knowledge as you want. You are ultimately in control of your journey. It's available. You need to take it. Take advantage of everything that is in front of you. It's there. It's there for the taking. We want you to take it. So um, Connect is a fabulous resource for you with, with anything that you need to look up. Linda, I, I will not say enough about her. Just a quick example. I was leery a couple of years ago. I was like, I, I just don't have time for social media. How, how am I going to have all these accounts? You know, have a Facebook, have an Instagram, have a Snapchat, have a Twitter. It took me a long time to really understand the power that um, these social media hubs have. They really do. Although a lot of it could produce negativity and evil, it, it's up to you on how you use those devices. So I was leery. I'm like, what's Twitter going to do for me? Really, it's just, it's just a bunch of people posting what they had for breakfast and cat videos. What is Twitter really going to do for me? So I decided um, to go find out for myself. And although it's six hours long, um, I went in increments. I went to uh, lynda.com and I established a Twitter account. And what an amazing experience because Twitter is so much more than posting what you had for breakfast. It's so much more. It makes connections to people that you would never thought that you would connect to. And the cool thing about having Linda is that I was able to create my account in real time. I, I could pause the tutorial and then do what they what they told me to do in my own account. And it was awesome. Just to give you a little taste. 
One of my favorite authors is Seth Graham Smith. If you don't know who he is, he wrote Abraham Lincoln's Vampire Hunter, Pride and Prejudice. Um, he, it, he wrote the script, the new script for Beetlejuice 2. He, he's awesome. Um, and I was incredibly excited about the new book that was coming out. It was this, it's a, a prequel to Abraham uh, Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I was in love with the first book. And Twitter had a tutorial. It was like a, a book trailer. So I watched this book trailer of um, the newer book, The Last American Vampire. And power of Twitter, all I wrote on Twitter, because you only have 140 characters, is I wrote, Mark Twain is a badass. That's all I wrote, and I put at Seth Graham, Graham Smith. Um, so I tweeted him, Mark Twain is a badass. Not only did he respond and favorite my tweet, he follows me, which uh, I'm having, a, I had a nerd moment where I almost had a heart attack, but it was the coolest thing in the world, and it, it, connected me to someone that I would have never thought to be connected to. So, my friends, you have the power to make these connections. And even though you are at the beginning of your journey, that doesn't make that doesn't make reaching out to people something unattainable. Take the risk. Reach out to people. You never know what's going to happen. You never, you never know what's going to happen for you. Um, so, um, take the risk. And if you have, if you have, uh, the time to make a Twitter account, make a Twitter account. I list my Twitter on um, ways to contact me. So uh, if you guys ever want to connect on Twitter, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, it's, you know, write those emails, send out letters of intent. Even if you don't get a response right away, it's something that is in the universe and you might get an answer. You might have a new relationship. You might have a connection. It's amazing. Amazing. Okay, now I preached. Now that I preached, <laughs> let's, let's get down to some of the things that I want you to be aware of. Okay, my side of things are going to look very, very different because everything is open. Okay, but I wanted you to know that if you scroll down to the very bottom of um, the platform, when you're on the activities page, it has tabs. And on your tabs, it's going to have technical support, okay, of course. It's going to have a tab for a student email, so you can retrieve your email right from the platform. And it also has a tab for connect. So you have a lot of places that you can travel right from the FSO platform, if you did not know. Okay. Let's get back to this. We went over with Linda. Okay. Integrative learning. I know that we all have questions. I had some questions after class about this, um, and it can be a little confusing. So if you guys looked at your schedule and you see hours listed, but it says to be announced or TBA, what those are are integrative learning hours that are connected to your attendance. 
Now, what does that mean? That means that for six hours a week, you're in live uh, lectures with me. Two hours, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That isn't all the hours to get accreditation or the credit for creative presentation. There are hours outside of class that are connected to your hours to receive credit. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay, so what does that look like? If we go back to the platform, there are actually activities that are laid out for you that are connected to um, your hours. Okay. All right, so while we're on the subject, the first one is visual story part one. Um, Jeremiah, great question. For the most part, they are. The first three activities are six hours for class. Okay, so that's six hours of attendance, um, equivalent to uh, three class sessions. Okay, so for the most part, they are, but there are some that are um, that only count for four hours or even two hours, and this will be uh, listed for you, and I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, cool. Um, to answer the private question, these sessions are are extra added. It's something that that I do um, to keep everybody on track. It's it's you'll find in the next couple of weeks they're going to be sessions. In case you have any questions or concerns, it's it's a way for us to communicate with each other. It's not they don't count for um, class hours. I hold them uh, just to keep you in the know. I don't have to hold um, go to sessions, but I do for for your benefit. Okay, uh, so visual storytelling part one. Now, all you have to do, don't pay attention to um, how I get into this because all you guys have to do is click on the assignment. However, on my side, I have to do an extra step and go into edit. Okay, so with every activity there and assignment, there is always an objective. An objective is going to give you a breakdown of what the assignment is and what it entails. At the bottom, to answer your question, Jeremy, at the bottom, it will give you the hours of attendance for the class. So it says this activity counts for six hours of class attendance and it'll give you that opportunity. Not to scare you, but what that means, if you blow off this assignment, you've already failed the class for attendance and you don't want that to happen. Uh, technically, if you read the handbook, six hours is the max that you can that you can go without failing the class. Um, really, it's two classes, four hours, and you have to think about um, the way that the classes are set up. It's only four weeks. It's six hours of, of class time a week. So, Missing a class is, is a big deal because there aren't that many classes in a month. Um, and 
this is a full full sale policy, attendance policy. Um, I, I make sure that you are in communication with your instructor. Things happen. It's understandable. People get sick, cars break down, things happen. As long as you stay in contact with your instructor, there you don't don't assume that your instructor could read minds and make sure that you stay in contact. Things that can be um, excused are, of course, doctor visits, any emergency room visits. These are things that constitute as um, excused absences. Um, going to a concert the night before or, um, you know, missing the bus or the, the unfortunately, that's not um, an excused absence and you can't document those type of things. So um, best thing, best advice I can, I can give you is make sure that you stay on top of your schedule. You, you make um, a plan for time management and you stick to it. Uh, I can only tell you from experience. And my experience is I had a full-time job, I had a family, and I had a full-time load um, for all through college, even my undergrad. Um, the best advice that I can give to you that works for me is that set aside time each day. Even if it varies, if it's a half an hour on Monday to read the instructions or read some people's posts on the discussion board, you're already ahead of the game. You're already keeping yourself proactive in every single day. Um, and I'm not saying that people, there aren't people that uh, work well under pressure. I'm just giving you what has worked for me in the past. It saves you so much unnecessary stress to do it that way. Matt, great question. And I'll, uh, I'm gonna get to the instructions right now. So write a story that really is just for guidance. It's, it's for you when you are creating your visual story and, and looking for images that would complement or say what you mean them to say, it's better to have that story in your head. That way, when your classmates are, are viewing your slideshow, they, and they're guessing what your story is, at least you have um, the story in your head about how you want to convey that message using visuals. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay, so this really is very painless. It doesn't have to be something that is stressful. It doesn't have to be something that takes you too much time. All it's really asking is for six to 10 images to tell your story. We take pictures every single day. We, we update our Facebook posts. We update Instagram. If you have Twitter, you're updating your Twitter. So really all it's asking is you to find images that tell your story. And it's getting, it's giving you practice um, to what's going to come towards the end of this month. It's giving you practice so when it comes time for your final presentation, you already been practicing what it means to have evocative um, images to complement your story. And the tutorial is right there. It's, it's real, it's less than five minutes. 
you tell story is so user friendly. It's a web 2.0 tool that's amazing because it allows you to share and communicate with each other. Um, so I, I want you to look at this as a fun activity, something that takes you away a little bit from all the academics and all the stress. And it gives you the opportunity to relax and really express yourself, express your story. Use something that speaks to you and you feel that will speak to your classmates so they can get to know you. Okay, I see some things. Jesse, so by completing this activity, it will count for six hours of class attendance. Yes. Susanna, can we use our personal pictures? Yes, is encouraged that you do. It really is. Because those are yours. And they speak to you and speak to who you are and your experience. So absolutely use um, your own pictures. And right here, the instructions kind of tell you a combination of both. So you may use something like AP images or go to Google images, uh, Flickr, photo bucket. There's an endless amount of resources that you could use for this project. Any questions on that? Matt? In my opinion, I'm already going to be asking you in assignments to, to be focusing on your path and degree program. This one, I want it to be fun. So if you, if you like telling stories and making up stories, please do it. Please do it. Be creative. Be, you have creative freedom with, with, with practically everything. But um, this especially, make this light. Make this something that you enjoy doing. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's go back. All right, so integrative learning activity. Cool. All right, the final project. The final project is something that we are definitely gonna go way more into detail with. I do not wanna bombard you with all the details yet. Uh, Cause this week, and we're gonna go over the main assignment um, in tomorrow's lecture. That's gonna be how we close the lecture. Um, but I like to introduce what the final project is. If you start thinking about yourself, it's all about you and your journey and what you want and goal setting. Um, so what you need to be doing at this time is think about that moment that made you or gave you that re revelation to make the decision to further your education and follow your dreams. This moment could be defined simply as you were sitting in the middle of your living room and Toy Story 2 was on the screen. You watched in awe Woody and Buzz Lightyear interact and come to life on screen. And it was that moment that you realize, I want to be a computer animator and bring the fe those feelings that I had as a child into the household of everyone in this country. I want that 10 year old kid to have the same feeling that I did when I watched characters come to life on screen. So think about that defining moment for yourself and 
what inspired you to um, embark on this journey and and uh, create this path for yourself. Um, so know that the final project is all about you and and your ideas and what it is that you want to accomplish when you become a full cell graduate and know that that is what the voice should be your voice is going to be your future self you graduated full sail university you have taken advantage of everything that you could possibly take advantage of while you are here and you now have the skills experience the drive and the know-how to accomplish what you set out to accomplish. Any questions on that? Ooh, there's silence. I don't know if I should be worried about that or that everything's cool. Um, Susanna, I see that your hand is up. Um, do you have a question? Okay, Patrick. Um, yes, I will repeat it, but know that this isn't the last time that I'm going to talk about the final project. I only want to give you some food for thought. Uh, really what I, wa I want you guys to do is one, think about your goals. Think about your ultimate goals as a full cell graduate. Your voice is going to be the future self and everything that you've taken advantage of while you were on this journey to prepare you to become who you want to become. And Think about that moment that you knew this was the path that you wanted to go on. It's going to be the why you do what you do. And again, this is, this is premature. It's something that I don't want to get into um, detail right now because there are steps. But that's what you should be thinking of. And yes, Susanna, of course, I would never, I would never put it out there. I would never hang you guys out to dry. I'm here to guide you. Right now, I have the position as a mentor, and I need to groom you guys to eventually be the mentor. And um, we'll talk more about that as well. Cool. Okay, uh, we are closing on the hour. So I do, I do want to go over the discussion board really quick um, and, and close things out if you guys have any questions. Um, but again, understand that this is supplementary and it's only scratching the surface. This is something that will be an ongoing conversation and something that we will prepare for this entire month. Um, and as long as you guys stay with me and you give me the opportunity to guide you in a direction, you'll have no problem. Um, yes, pretty much. Uh, it depends. It, it depends on how many questions we have, um, but usually about an hour. Cool. Okay, so this week's discussion board, we went into a little bit of this um, in lecture yesterday. There's many of you that um, have already been proactive and have posted to the discussion board, which is awesome because um, that gives me an opportunity to start communicating with you.
And it really is one of my favorite things to do. I will tell you hands down, one of my favorite things to do with this class is to make my cup of coffee, sit down and read your stories. I love it. it it's something that it gets me up in the morning. I'm excited. I'm excited to read your stories. I'm excited to communicate. I'm excited to be enlightened and um, inspired. Um, and I, I really hope that that's how you start to feel. You start to feel excited about everything, everyone that surrounds you and the stories that they have to tell and the, the knowledge that they have to give, the experience, the perspective. Um, you know, it's far beyond getting that little flag in Facebook that someone liked your picture. Someone has actually read your story and took the time to, to acknowledge your story and your inspiration. And it just blows on my mind. And I feel like that is, is such a compliment. Um, so I hope, I hope that it does catch on and does get contagious. Now with all, all the assignments, this is discussion boards and main assignments. There is always guided questions. Guided questions are there to help you formulate what you're gonna write about. It's, it's basically there to give you a mental checklist of what you should be including in your discussion board post or in your assignment. Um, it's, it's a great place to start is looking over the guided questions and giving yourself that food for thought. Okay, well, where do I begin? That has been the main question throughout the 13 years that I've been an educator is where do I begin, Miss P? I don't even know where to begin. And that's what these guided questions do for you. If you mentally take them in, or you're old school like me and have to write everything down for it to sink in, that's what I recommend you to do. Always start out with the guided questions. It gives you kind of a map of what you should be looking for and what you should be um, incorporating into your discussion or your assignment. Oh, Brandon, did, did my um, audio go out? Okay, you guys can hear me. And I meant here. I hate correct. Awesome. Okay. Uh... Loud and clear. Awesome. Okay, so that's my recommendation to stay on top of it. Um, uh, Brandon can hear me. Okay. Um, no worries if your audio cu cuts out. I record these sessions and they'll be posted on. Um, announcements. Okay, so in this discussion board, make sure that you are answering all those questions. It's cool to um, share your feelings. Absolutely. It's, it's what's going to connect us to each other, that vulnerability. The fact that we do feel makes us um, human beings. Uh, so in that, know that many of us are in the same boat and we have the same feelings. 
Make sure that you are returning back to the discussion board and you're answering the prompts. You are talking about presentations that you have done in the past or presentations that you attended to in the past. Um, you know, what type of presentations have you created? And even if you have never done quote unquote, the PowerPoint presentation in front of a class, I will ask you, do you have a small child at home and um, negotiated how, that they have to eat their vegetables? Well, that's a presentation. Uh, have you ever asked your parents for the car keys and had to convince them why you're responsible and and could take their car out for the evening that's that that that's a presentation um have you ever convinced a group of friends to do something that you wanted them to do uh whether it was an occasion or an idea you had then uh that's a presentation so Know that presentations go way beyond the PowerPoint presentation. They go way beyond having to stand in front of a classroom. We present all the time. Um, and there are different ways that we can present. And that's what um, I'm looking forward to. And that's what I'm excited about. Because we all have different delivery systems and we have all different strengths and I can't wait to see what those strengths are. So on the discussion board, just to give you a, a brief overview, because um, this error happens all the time. Okay, so you're in the discussion board and I asked you guys by Wednesday at 11.59 to have your initial post in. The way that you do an initial post and to get that green check mark that you posted to the board is all the way at the top, your post and you click in there, and that is where you start your initial post. If you reply, it's going to show up as a reply when I go into your name, when I grade these, but it will not show up as a green check mark that you completed the assignment. Make sense? Cool. So make sure that you're going all the way at the top where it says your post and you're posting your initial post there, okay? Um, know that people that have already posted, I've a comment on already, okay? This is going to give you kind of uh, hints on maybe things that you have to elaborate on or questions that I, that I ask to carry on the conversation and know that if you look at the rubric the second part of the discussion is commenting on at least two of your classmates at least means that you have met the requirements that does not mean that you're getting an a on the assignment Meeting the requirements on the rubric is kind of in the middle if you look. Um, if you are one of those that want that A or you're shooting for that A, look in the above and beyond column and know that it takes more than meeting the minimum requirements to get an A on any one assignment. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay. Um, 
Stefan asked a good question, but it went by very quick. Yes. Uh, yes, you have to make your initial post and then reply to at least two others. And then you're done. Then you're done with your discussion board. Okay, like I said, we, we went over the integrative learning activity that is for this week. We went over the discussion board and tomorrow I'm gonna go over what the main assignment is. Very, very painless, um, but I think I gave you a lot of information today. Know that I'm going to, this is recorded. Uh, once it stops rendering, I will post it to my YouTube channel and send you guys out an announcement. I will back that up also with an email to your at full sale edu address. Okay, Stefan says, and so far the only assignments to do is just 1.1 and 1.2. That is correct. If you are already satisfied with those two, you may start on anything else at any time, any time that you want. Um, also know that the reading for Resonate is open the entire week. So it, it is not required that you complete all the reading in one day. Um, it could be spread out throughout the entire week and it's open until Sunday. Okay, same with presentation history. The only thing I ask for interaction is that you have that initial post up by Wednesday evening and then you have until Sunday to make those responses or elaborate on your post at any time. Cool? Okay. Before we close down for the rest of the afternoon, does anyone have any questions or concerns, comments, anything? Okay, Brandon, I see your hand up. Hi, Brandon, how are you? I don't hear you. Are you there, Brandon? Okay, I'll come back to you. Hi, Bennett, do you have a question? Yeah, where again can we find this recording in case we need to go back and just find anything? I am gonna post it under your announcements. So like I showed you yesterday, if you go to the envelope icon and you go down to announcements in the middle, it'll be posted up here, okay? All right. And Thanks. then I'm also gonna send it to your email address. So I'll post it in the announcements that you can um, pretty much review it anytime during the month. And I will also send it to your at wholesale.edu address. All right. Cool. Okay, uh, Josh says, are there just general posts or do they have to be about the books? Um, are you talking about 1.1, Josh? Okay, yeah, 1.1 1 .1 is, it's pretty much, it has to do with the reading. It's something that uh, sparked your attention or that you found interesting, inspired you, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's definitely connected to the reading, whether it was a concept that Nancy introduced or even a supplementary um piece that was inside of the chapters that caught your eye.
You're welcome. Okay, I see Jesse's hand up. Hi, Jesse, you have a question? Uh, yeah. Um, for one of the assignments that um, involves three TED Talk videos do you have to listen to, do you want us to put um, uh, the document into Microsoft Word or something else? Um, Jesse, I'm going to go address the assignment tomorrow in lecture. So I'm gonna, right. Yeah, I'm going to go over exactly what to do. Right now, I want you guys to uh, focus on that discussion board. And and right. chapters, cool. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Let's see. Any hands? All right, you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for coming on a non-lecture day. Um, I do hope you found this helpful. It's something that I'm going to have available at this time on Tuesdays um, up until the final week. Um, so if you do find this helpful, please spread the word, spread the word. Um, know, know that it's something, even if there's not a schedule go-to, that it's available to you. If you need to speak with me or you need me to look at something and help you uh, with an assignment, know that this is, um, this is available. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me this this morning, and I will see you tomorrow afternoon. I'm excited. I'm definitely excited. Um, later, just look for that announcement probably later on in this afternoon. It takes a little while for videos to render, but it'll be up there for your convenience. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the afternoon tomorrow.